Here's a little uh, tutorial on this main uh, swatch study, getting familiar with these five particular paints. Quinacridone Burnt Orange by Daniel Smith. Quinacridone Rose, I like the M. Graham. Azo Yellow is also by M. Graham. Um, Peacock Blue by Holbein. Beautiful phthalo blue green shade color, but greener than most and a little bit lighter than most. More like cyan in my humble opinion. As well as Daniel Smith Indigo. So I've already uh, done a watery layer of burnt orange in the top three and then um, let that dry and then I've come back with a, uh, a little bit more juicy mix on, on two and three here. Just getting a, a good idea of how things, uh, just the range, the sort of range from watery to really creamy will get with any particular paint. So right now I'm going to start doing the same thing um, with the Quinn Rose. And that will look a lot like this, getting situated here. Um, very watery mix, getting a lot of paint in my brush. As long as I'm going quickly and I have everything plenty wet, I can come back in and clean up some lines and whatnot. And this water that's pooling down at the bottom, I can control a little bit by how much I, um, actually can control quite a bit by how much I tip it and whatnot. But if it does start getting pooling to the point that it's, uh, you're starting to worry about it dripping down, certainly just flatten it out. That helps. If I'm trying to get rid of that, I'm going to um, dry off my brush a little bit and make a thirsty brush. And holding it pretty vertical, perpendicular to the paper, my brush, that is, soak up a little bit. There's a comment when, uh, when doing thirsty brush, there's a common um, mistake of trying to do it with more of the flat side of the brush, the belly, which doesn't really work so great. When I am trying to get a little bit more control, I will lift up and use the tip of the brush. Drying it off a little bit. So instead of trying to pick it up like, like that, which I think in some ways makes sense, I'm gonna pick it up more with the tip. And right at the beginning, you'll see it sort of has left a little stripe where it's picked it up and it seems lighter. But as you can tell over here, it's actually going to keep running down and is likely to even out. And even if it does even out, that's okay because we're, we're going to fix that on a, another layer. A little bit more coin rose, still watery. I could have certainly just mixed up enough to try to do three to have them be really kind of the same. But you'll get plenty of practice at um, just mixing in general. That, that sort of just a few downstrokes. I'm really kind of using the, the belly of the brush kind of side, the side of it like that, covering quite a bit of ground. Come back. 
back in and be a little bit more careful about getting up to those edges, but not, not too panicked, not too worried. Here's a good opportunity to, if you do happen to get sort of something, or just go out, out of bounds to the point that's really bugging you, get a paper towel. Um, I usually, and then I'll press it in. It helps to do this sort of quickly so the paint isn't really staining. I've waited a little bit too long, so that paint actually stained there. I might be able to fix that a little bit later. Maybe not. But I um, soak up a little bit further into the shape. And technically, even though that is still damp, it does seem like it will still hold its edge pretty well. This is a very soft brush and this paper doesn't really like to lift as easily as some other papers. This is the Fluid 100. But I have ways of dealing with you later if I feel like it. Let's see, I'm going to go to the Azo Yellow. Here's a spot over here. Eh, it's a little bit dirty. It's a little bit of uh, burnt orange still in there, so I'm going to clean that out. <laughs> yeah, that's a fun sound. So with yellow, with any color, we are talking about these different mixes with different amounts of water. And one of the things to get comfortable with is knowing that just because something is watery or juicy or creamy doesn't necessarily tell you how dark or light it's going to end up especially with paints that are inherently light-valued, uh, yellow, for example. Even at uh, juicy and creamy, it's really not going to be a whole lot darker, but it is still good to, um, to understand, even though it has more of a limited range, to understand every paint, every pigment, and the entire spectrum of how much water is being mixed in with it. So this is a really watery yellow. There, that's fine for that. Clean that up a little bit. Let me see, I'm gonna switch water here because now I'm gonna go to the Peacock Blue. Let's clean up a spot here. Bap in my brush to make sure I'm getting that the yellow out. I am putting some clear water there, and I can tell that's pretty darn clear. So um, I'm confident there's not a, a whole lot of yellow left. So I'm going to make a very watery mix of the peacock blue. And do a very similar thing. Mm -hmm. 
Still feel like I have plenty of paint in this brush to do a second pass, even though I see that pooling down there. And yeah, actually, <laughs> don't try to do that um, unless you feel confident doing it. I would address one shape at a time, take care of everything you need to take care of before moving on. When you start doing this enough and it's really not something that uh, intimidates you at all, you can certainly do as much as you want. There's some sort of strange hair in there that I picked up with my the tip of my brush like that. So I sort of did it, started that, stopped, came back. There was a lot of opportunity for things to get really um, inconsistent for that shape. And I don't know if it is or not, but it, either way, if, if it is and it's still wet and, um, and pretty much over the whole shape, I could, I could still come back and bring in a whole a whole sort of new round of of paint and tip it a little bit more to make sure that it's really moving down down the the paper i could even sort of come back and do like that like i think i did with the the rows. You see me um, dropping in, plopping in with the tip of my brush a little bit of extra paint. And I do think it, I'll, I'll show you here, it helps if you do that. It, holding the brush at an angle at an angle similar to when you're uh, using a thirst sponging up with a thirsty brush if I use the side and the belly of my brush and I sort of flick it off like that it will sort of stay behind. I mean, that's when the paint is going to lay down nicely. But at this point, if I'm trying to dab some in, you'll see it's really sort of just coming out from the tip. So what I I think is, is, is a better to have sort of more control is to just hold it a little bit more vertical. And as long as there's plenty of water and paint in the brush, it will be more than happy to to come on out and move to the paper. Let me finish that sh shape up. Let's see. Now to some indigo. So as you have probably figured out, if you've tried the indigo, it goes extremely dark. But just like any other watercolor, it can be um, diluted to the point where it's a, a lovely light watery, light, valued color. So it's a very, it's a, what's sort of called a, a cool, that's in, in terms of temperature, uh, gray. Something happened to my paper, a couple spots here.
So that's that's not going away, but um, that's fine. make sure if if your paint is not moving around like this is that you probably don't have enough water mixed in with the paint and that could be that you're just not getting your brush filled up enough with water or using a synthetic brush which doesn't uh, doesn't want to carry as much water but it takes plenty of practice to learn how to be to learn how to lead the water where you want it to go with this tool called a brush as well as understanding just how much water can accumulate along here and not sort of be worried about it just being comfortable with knowing that I can come back there and it's not gonna drip So there's finishing up the uh, the watery layer for each color. I'm going to let that dry as as well as these original second layers for just the Quinburn orange. But I'll let it dry. Come on back, do some more.